Hello and welcome to the second delivery of this series of tutorials and again I want to thank the amazing patrons to make this series possible. Again it's completely sponsored by them and it will be free for all of you to use. Now we already saw the basic levels and we have here a basic geo but we don't have any kind of connection to deliver this out and to pass it by. So the first thing that we're going to do is to create a null object here. This is going to be just like a point of contact and we are going to put on caps the first word and we're going to put our geo. We're going to have it all in caps. It's mostly because when you have things in caps in Houdini, if you have a tree view, you will see the cap word at the start. So if everything else inside is in lower and you use something in caps, you're always going to see the output at the start. And that's really easy when you try to call them in. So that's going to be our basic first setup. And here we're going to start seeing the basic of the guide groom. Remember that the guide groom note specs a skin that is not animated. So specs an static pose or static ref. If you want to use something that is animated, you will need to use the guide form, but also extract one frame. If you have like an animated cache, you need a pre-roll. That means that it's when it's not animated yet and to use that to drive as your uh, guide groom geo. So in this point, we will see the first area. This first area that we see here is the import area. So we can bring in the connection of the area that we want to use, rest skin source. We can import here a surface operator. So we can, let's say, import or out geo. We can select a group with the group options and it's going to go directly into the geo to see what's the group that we want to use. Uh, so this is basically just an import option of the areas where we want to spawn the fur on or to create the BDB to spawn the fur on. Now we have the rest skin BDB. This is going to create a voxel or a group of voxel that it's going to be generated from the input skin. These voxels are going to be used mostly for everything that has collision parameters inside of Houdini, be it the guides or the hairs. This it's just a representation of the skin and it relies really heavily the guide room system and anything that has collision or to avoid the skin penetration. Uh, it's basically going to define a voxel size and that's going to define also the speed and the performance of the tools that you use. So the smaller the size of the voxels, the slower the performance is going to be, but the more accurate is going to be the final result. Then after that, we have the basic scatters. So we have how many guides do we want to scatter or the ways that we want. We want one guide per point. So it's going to be under each point of the surface. You're going to scatter one guide. This is mostly game settings. Then we have use external geometry. If we want to use external geometry to use as the guide creation. And then we have the basic scatter on surface. Houdini on the scatter works via uh, the scale. As far as my reach has been, there is not a specific, or my investigation has been, or research has, there's not a specific unit to move in Houdini, but my tests are bounding me and I have seen better results using centimeters as your main unit. So one unit is one centimeter. Now the density is just going to be a distribution on the normals or on the actual points and you have different scatter seats. You have the override option. Every time that you see an override option, it's because you can multiply this value by data, being in this case, a skin attribute. So attribute that resides on the skin, so the object, and texture attributes, be something that you created in Substance Painter, in Mari, so you can create your density anywhere and just pass it through the network and drive this as a multiplier. Then we have the scatter seats. And finally, we have the relax iterations. The more iterations you have, the more of an even distribution you have. And the least relax iterations you have, the more uneven. Technically, if you have and find a good balance between them, evenness is not the best way if you go for final realism. 
and non-iteration will give you really weird clumpy hairs. So a good level that you don't see perfect uh, relaxed distribution will be enough for you. Then we have initial direction attributes that so this will be the third direction and it comes from the inside. Then we have the segments of the guides. So how many points or guides will have, as you can see here, we have three points, two segments, and the more you add, the more you will have. The basic level is eight, and depending of your groom, you can go to a lower number of four or a higher number, depending of the length of your hair, basic uh, grooming there. And then you have the main length control that is outside. You can also change that from the inside, but you have a major multiplier on the outside, the basic overrides again. Then you have the display color. This is just a basic color on how do you want to see them. You have the draw, draw white guides if you want to see them with more width. So something insane like that or something more like this. So you can decide how do you see your guides and then you can uh, optimize and the final values. Displays a subdivision curves apparently is giving some issues and it's making the hair and Houdini work slower. I have found it more on the hair generate than on the guide curves, but it's something to be aware of, of the way that it behaves. I hope that this helped. And in the next tutorial, we're going to go inside into the guide groom to see some of the functions and how it works. Thank you for seeing the tutorial and I hope you like it.